This is a fan-generated show. If you'd like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our new Rumble channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Good evening. Welcome to the Glazov Gang. Tonight, Laura Loomer's battle with CARE slash Hamas. With us this evening, Laura Loomer, an investigative journalist. Laura, what an honor and pleasure it is to have you on the Glazov Gang. Thanks so much for having me. Fantastic. Laura, always a privilege to have uh, such a brave and noble dissident on our show because we're in really perilous times. We really value and admire your courage and fight for the truth and for freedom. So, very, I don't even know what word to use sometimes. Let me call it peculiar. Very peculiar recent developments regarding a lawsuit you filed against Twitter uh, back in 2019, I think. Update us, tell us what's going on. Great, so I filed a lawsuit against Twitter and CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations in 2019, uh, because as many people know, in 2018, I was permanently banned from Twitter mm. and I have a massive following of uh, nearly 265,000 followers. My Twitter account was getting over 150 million views a month, which is, you know, more viewers than CNN and MSNBC combined on a monthly basis, right? And so uh, I was ultimately banned for a tweet in which I called Ilhan Omar anti-Jewish and pro-Sharia. And at the time in 2018, I had been on the ground in Minnesota exposing Ilhan Omar prior to anyone really even knowing who she was, right? This was before she was even elected to Congress. And I had been conducting uh, investigations into jihadist candidates across the country, uh, including uh, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and Keith Ellison. And so uh, when she uh, when she won the race, uh, I tweeted that she was uh, anti-Jewish and pro-Sharia. And then a week and a half after I posted the tweet, Twitter decided that they were going to permanently ban me uh, for what they called in that in that uh, that tweet. Uh, anti-Muslim hate speech. <laughs> and of course, there's no such thing as hate speech. And uh, fast forward a few months, in January of 2019, the, the, the Wall Street Journal actually released an investigative report uh, where uh, they were looking into groups that were getting people banned from Twitter. And uh, a woman by the name of Zara Bilhu, who's one of the executive directors for CARE out of the San Francisco branch, um, admitted to the Wall Street Journal that they aggressively lobbied, care aggressively lobbied Twitter and its executives to ban me and that they don't usually get involved, um, you know, in lobbying people uh, to be banned from Twitter. But in my case, they had to make an exception. Uh, and of course, you know, CARE, uh, CARE's Hamas, CARE has uh, endorsed Ilhan Omar and CARE financially backs Ilhan Omar. Um, and so uh, while I had uh, a term of service agreement between me and Twitter, CARE tortiously interfered with that. And so that's why I sued them for tortious interference because here in Florida, where my business is incorporated and where I'm a Florida resident and a Florida voter and a Florida, you know, Florida, Florida business owner resident, um, there is a law that says that, uh, that it is illegal uh, for any organization that is or, or foreign government or any group that is receiving funding from a foreign uh, government to tortiously interfere uh, within a Floridian's, uh, you know, business contract or business dealings. And so because CARE uh, has been found in the Holy Land Foundation terrorism trial to receive uh, funding and financial support and to also give financial to support, uh, support to foreign terrorist organizations, uh, you know, my, my legal team uh, said that this would be a sound legal argument. And ultimately the case, uh, you know, proceeded for about two years and it was dismissed and we appealed it. And then in the end, uh, you know, the appeal was struck down and then CARE now uh, had, you know, filed a, um, uh, filed a, a request for attorney's fees and it was granted by a federal magistrate. And now this federal magistrate out of Florida is saying that I owe uh, a terrorist organization nearly $125,000 in legal fees. So much there to unpack, Laura. Very, very surreal. The Wall Street Journal itself reported that CARE had lobbied Twitter to ban you, right? 
Yeah, so, so they had a direct quote. They had a direct yeah. quote. And then what they did when this came out and it was so egregious and people were reporting on it is they they concocted this blatant lie and mm -hmm. they partnered with this group called Right Wing Watch, which is, you know, an mm -hmm. offshoot of, of um, SPLC. And they created this this conspiracy theory that they pranked me and in, in the Wall Street Journal into believing that CARE lobbied Twitter to ban me. Um, and so now they're going around saying that I was pranked into this when really the Wall Street Journal had already reported on, uh, you know, Zara Bilhu and it's it's her own quote, right? So I don't understand how they can say that I was pranked when you read the Wall Street Journal story and you can see her actually admitting to them. Um, and so they're, they're claiming that I was pranked uh, because uh, someone from Right Wing Watch was pretending to be a Twitter employee and and emailed my um, my uh, you know my site and was trying to talk to me. But you know I'm an investigative journalist. Uh, I I talk to I talk to people all the time and doesn't mean that I'm going to publish something just because somebody you know messages me or contacts me. Um, and so uh, this is what they're doing to cover up the fact that they do lobby uh, to get people banned. And um, when you're when you're deplatformed and you don't have a way to fight back, you know it's hard to counter these lies. And so they've been you know spewing these idiotic lies um, and and distortions about what really happened. When if you read the Wall Street Journal article, it's pretty evident that the woman admitted to care or admitted to the Wall Street Journal that care lobbied to me. Right. So I'm just, I'm just, let's just visualize this picture here. So you're telling the truth about Ilhan Omar and everything that we have learned, all the empirical evidence that's come out, it, the, the, it's all on the record. Everything you said is true. We've got an unindicted co-conspirator in the, uh, in the Holy Land Foundation trial of 2008 slash 2000, uh, 2007, 2008. Uh, of Hamas funding. So CARE is, a, this organization linked to Hamas is approaching Twitter, telling them ban this person. In terms of what Twitter is, to be told and pressured in such a way, especially by an organization of this uh, character, something seems unethical, something seems also kind of illegal. And it is, it is illegal and it is unethical. And, uh, and, and if you read the, if you read the legal complaint that was filed by my, uh, my legal team, we lay it out and we lay it out how it's a violation of the Florida law, especially with regards, like, like I said, to an organization like CARE, terrorist organization that uh, is tied to uh, foreign terrorist organizations trying to uh, tortiously interfere uh, with the Floridians business efforts. And then one of the things that was, you know, pretty absurd in in this in this uh, in this lawsuit is that the judge uh, when they dismissed the case they said that it was nonsensical nonsensical for me to uh, argue that you could have a business relationship with Twitter well how is it nonsensical if if there are business accounts associated with all of these social media platforms and every every single content creator or journalist in this day and age has to have access to these social media sites in order to carry out their profession in the modern digital era. Um, and so, you know, you see these companies like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, which is Facebook, of course, um, advertising themselves as being essential, right, uh, for, for having any type of business or career in this modern digital era that we find ourselves living in, especially in the age of COVID and social distancing. Um, and then you have judges who don't really seem to understand that, um, that, that you, you can, in fact, make a living through these sites. And it's quite necessary to have these sites if you want to make a living. Well, again, surreal. Two things there. This judge doesn't understand what's happening in our world today because this is how people are making a living on social media and on all these platforms, including Twitter. Secondly, the fact is, is that you did lose revenue because of what happened, correct? Well, I did. I lost uh, over 90% of my income when I was permanently banned from Twitter. And CARE is even quoted and their executives are quoted and I have screenshots of it. Their executives celebrating on Twitter the fact that I lost 90% of my income. And now they're trying to get me to pay their legal fees. Well, if you're going to celebrate me, you know, you can't have your cake and eat it too. It's kind of funny that they want to celebrate 
Um, they want to celebrate the fact that they got me debanked and got me deplatformed and lobbied Twitter to shut me down to the point where I lost my income. But then they want to say that I owe them one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. I mean, where where's the yeah. money coming from? And also, too, what you have here is a federal you have a federal magistrate. All right. A United States judge, American judge ordering a Jewish American citizen to fund Hamas. I mean, that's literally what's happening here when you break it down. So I guess now we have judges ordering United States citizens to commit treason. Some kind of an absurd dark comedy. We're going to be back in just a minute. We have to take a break with our sponsors. Dear ladies and gentlemen, I recently got one of Mike Lindell's pillows and comforters at mybillow.com. And I started getting some of the most restful sleeps in my life. And you can do the same. Go to mypillow.com and use code GG21 to get incredible and amazing discounts. Or just call 1-800-854-0673. While you're doing that, you'll know that you're supporting Mike Lindell, a true American hero fighting a true American cause. And you'll also be supporting the Glazoff gang. Thank you. May God bless you and may God bless America. And we are back with our guest, Laura Loomer. Laura, thank you so much for joining us today. I just want to continue here just very quickly to just recap in terms of care and who we're dealing with. So as we had mentioned, the Council on American Islamic Relations, an unindicted co-conspiracy in a Hamas terror funding uh, case, the Holy Land Foundation trial of 2007-2008. That's what it was named by the Justice Department. Now, it's very interesting that the Obama administration never went after all of these unindicted co-conspiracies. That's a whole other show, but that's just, that's just madness and a, a real tragedy and something that's just atrocious that they didn't go after um, these organizations. Now, so we also know that CARE's parent company, the Islamic Association of Palestine, IAP, CARE is an outgrowth of this organization, and the, the IAP was established by senior Hamas operative Mausa Abu Marzouk, and it functioned as Hamas's public relations and recruitment arm in the United States. So it's very clear what CARE is. It's been declared a terrorist organization by the, by the United Arab Emirates, so we could go on and on. What do you make of all this in terms of so you you know you're 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 going after care we see what it is in terms of what it did to you and and a judge takes the side of care against you that that's uh that's pretty dark stuff for america right no it's extremely dark and uh you know it it just goes to show you that there really is no justice in this country anymore real no real due process but also, too, um, it's a win for cancel culture, and I think that it's an abomination that uh, that if you you know it, it, talking about Islamic terrorism has really become a third rail issue. And if you and you know what this is like because they've come after you as well. If you talk about these issues and the threat that that Islam poses to America, okay, you are ostracized and maligned uh, by uh, Jewish organizations and conservative organizations and the Republican Party and the mainstream media. And so while this should be a story that, you know, outrages every single American citizen, and, you know, when when you look at the conservative voter base or, uh, you know, Jews and Christians in America who find individuals in the squad like Ilhan Omar or Rashida Tlaib, uh, you know, absolutely repulsive. Uh, well, who do you think is backing them up? Right? They formed a Muslim caucus this last year in Congress uh, with the help of CARE. Okay, when when crafting their statements, attacking immigration policy and attacking the terror watch list and advocating for Islamic immigrants to be imported into America, uh, Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib are on the record as having people like Nihad Awad, right, the head of CARE, as their advisors as their advisors. And so you have members of Congress who are openly and and actively advising uh, on political matters, okay? People who have access to classified information on our Foreign Affairs Committee with a terrorist organization that is recognized as such, okay, by by the United States State Department, Hamas. Um, And so, 
Um, this is why in 2018, I called these women the, the Hamas caucus. And now, uh, you know, it's a term that's starting to become, you know, more popular now that the, the Republican Party is finally starting to wake up to the fact that we have these jihadists serving in Congress. Um, but, um, but if we are going to win this war and, and we're going to prevent things like this from happening and we're going to preserve the sanctity of our judicial system, then, you know, there, there needs to be a total elimination of this PC culture and this unwillingness by the GOP to talk about Islam. Absolutely. And that's how I'd like to end the program today is by your style of fighting and why the left just has to try to get rid of you in terms of, you know, the platform and in terms of the, the boundaries of discourse. They can't stand somebody like Trump because Trump is a fighter. Trump fights back. The left can't handle that. They, you know, they like the conservatives like Romney, and this is the problem with conservatives in general. They don't know how to fight culture war, and uh, you know, they like to have their bow ties on and they like to be nice and keep their lawns trim. Meanwhile, the left engages in Alinsky style tactics and has completely taken over academia, Hollywood, you know, the higher culture, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so you engaged and engage in, I think, what what you call loomering and very outspoken, you know, aggressive, confrontational. You became one of my favorite people. You were, uh, this is for my own self-interest, you were handcuffed to, I can't remember the exact institution, but you had screamed out my, my name. Pardon? You had screamed out my name, and I think Pamela Geller and Robert Spencer's name, and I appreciate that. But you don't believe in this thing, what the conservatives, you know, that this, just this failure of what they do. You're a real fighter. You, use, you turn the left's tactics against them, and uh, they're terrified of you. Uh, talk a little bit about that and how they succeeded in making you a non-person in terms of their social spheres. Yeah, no, you're absolutely correct. And, and so, uh, you know, I come from the Project Veritas style of journalism, and, uh, you know, when, when you work for Project Veritas, or even in my own style of bloomering, as you mentioned, right, it's all about uh, about adopting these Alinsky tactics and defeating the enemy by using their playbook against them. And so uh, I was, you know, one of one of the few, if not one of the only, uh, you know, conservative activists that really successfully uh, weaponized their tactics against them. Um, and they had never really, you know, had an instance where a conservative activist with a large following. Uh, mm. was able to successfully disrupt, you know, their performances or their events uh, and expose their hypocrisy. And so that's really what I made a name for myself doing, uh, you know, confronting these high profile individuals, people like Hillary Clinton or Ilhan Omar or, you know, Nancy Pelosi when I put illegal aliens on her lawn or like you mentioned, handcuffing myself to Twitter. Um, and so uh, they decided that that was uh, too much of a threat for them. And, and actually, too, the Washington uh, Post um, in 2019, they actually published a report and George Soros had actually, they detailed this in the report, you can look it up, he actually paid for a study to see which Twitter accounts were most um, were most responsible for and effective in uh, pushing out information about Ilhan Omar. And they found that my account uh, was the number one Twitter account in disseminating information about Ilhan Omar um, uh, and her ties to terrorism. And then Donald Trump was number two. And so they found my Twitter account to actually be more influential in educating the public about Ilhan Omar marrying her brother and you know her ties to terrorism. Terrorism, and they just didn't want to have that, right? And then they sh they had this entire web that they constructed of accounts uh, that were, you know, pushing out information and influencing people. So, yeah. um, and so that's that's why they are deplatforming people, and it's what I've been warning yeah. about uh, for years. And if you expose the left or you counter their narrative mm -hmm. or you go against their agenda, you'll be deplatformed too. And look, yeah. they deplatformed a sitting United States president. Meanwhile, yeah. actual terrorist organizations are allowed to have Twitter and Facebook and you know access to the internet. What a dark time uh, for somebody like myself that's the son of Soviet dissidents. In America today, we can feel that communist Soviet chokehold coming. And uh, America's not gonna be saved by people like, uh, like Mitt Romney. 
It's going to be saved by people like you, Laura. So you're a tremendous inspiration uh, to freedom-loving people. The Glazov gang loves you. You give us hope. Thank you for your courage and nobility and fighting for all that is good and for America. Before we go, Laura, you never, uh, you never stop. You keep fighting. To the best of my knowledge, you've got a book coming out. You're a congressional candidate. Tell us a little bit about what you're up to and where people can find you and uh, check out what you're doing and support you in all your efforts. Well, thank you so much. And yeah, you're right. You know, look, uh, obviously, I'm not happy about, the, you know, this judge's decision. But then again, you know, I am also not going to I'm not going to give in and, and fund Islamic terrorism. And I'm going to keep fighting. I do have a book coming out. It's not a biography. Um, it's called Loomered, How I Became the Most Banned Woman in the World. Um, and it's out October 5th, but it's available for pre-order right now um, with uh, online retailers like Barnes & Noble. Um, and uh, you're right, I am running for Congress. I ran for Congress in 2020, and I'm now running again for 2022. And I'm running in Florida. Uh, last election cycle, when I, uh, I ran here in District 21, President Trump endorsed me, and he also voted for me because he's a resident in District 21. But, uh, you know, an interesting fact is that CARE's largest branch is actually located here in Florida. And when I'm elected to Congress in 2022, because I'm going to win this time around, right? One of the first things I'm going to do in Congress is I'm going to draft legislation to designate the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist organization. And when that passes, groups like CARE that have, and, and the, uh, and, and ISNA and ICNA and all these groups that have been found uh, in the Holy Land Foundation terrorism trial to have ties to the Muslim Brotherhood will be shut down. And people like Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib will be able to face charges for their associations with the Muslim Brotherhood once it's designated mm. as a terrorist organization. So if people yeah. want to support my efforts, they can go to lauralumerforcongress.com and they can learn more about my campaign and, uh, you know, help send a real America first fighter that's not af afraid to take on this Marxist jihadi alliance that's destroying our country. What an inspiration you are, Laura Loomer. Thank you for coming on the Glazov Gang, and our heart goes out to you in immense gratitude for your fight for freedom and for America. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon on the Glazov Gang. Good night. Welcome to my artist studio where all the magic happens. This is the station for painting, and that is the station for all the resin art I do. If you want to check out my art, all you got to do is go to LUTF Studio. Dot com. While you're there, make sure to use the promo code GLAZOV. You will get yourself a wonderful discount and generous portion of your purchase will be donated to Glazov Gang channel on YouTube. So the one and only wonderful Dr. Jamie Glazov can keep on fighting for our freedom.